Hey guys, welcome to Toasty Taco, a new less scripted podcast style series that's meant mostly just to be listened to, so put your headphones on, start your drive, chore, or bathroom break, because it's time to talk about why The Elder Scrolls 6 shouldn't suck, but probably will. So I think the first thing to consider when talking about Elder Scrolls 6 is, of course, going to be the weight, because if there's nothing that we don't always associate with Elder Scrolls 6, it is an eternity in between two game releases. Now, I think everyone here basically knows the gist of they didn't want it to take so long, but Starfield took forever, and now here they are, etc. So I'm not going to go over that. But I think what we do need to consider is the consequences of having such a long gap in between two releases. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to go so long without a game. I mean, it's definitely not ideal, but if it ends up being a good game, it really shouldn't matter. What I think really matters with such a big gap is just the fact that when we have... 10 years, 15 years to like fully speculate on what the game's going to be, what we expect. That's a decade's worth of expectations. Because when Oblivion's being made, when Skyrim's being made, Fallout games, etc., you only have five years in between. Your expectations will just not quite skyrocket as high because it's it just feels like uh, another game. Oh, it's just the fourth Elder Scrolls. Okay, now it's the fifth Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls 6 has had so long, though, that it has to basically be astronomical in order to live up to what we're expecting from it. Because it's not just five years new Elder Scrolls game, it's it's the Elder Scrolls game. And at the moment, it feels like probably the last one we'll get before we die, if we stay on the current track record. So I do think that when considering the length, it's not necessarily a bad thing that they waited so long to make the game because they're just working on other stuff. It's not like they're lazy. However, I do think that it gives much more opportunity for our expectations to get unrealistic or you know, to expect that just because we got a 12-year wait, or a 13-year wait, 15-year wait, doesn't necessarily mean that we're getting a game that took 15 years of effort. Because again, Starfield and stuff is taking a lot of that time. The problem, though, is that, you know, high expectations are fine, but we can see that when expectations get high before a game is released, you know, No Man's Sky, for example, it can usually hurt pretty bad once it does come out, just because you expect it so much and it just, like, didn't quite pay off. Now, No Man's Sky... Very different story because, you know, they updated it a billion times. Now the game is super good. But yeah, so I, I think that's why the weight aspect of it will play a decently big role because it has to fill the shoes of a 15-year wait with only like a five-year development cycle. So they really have to up their game and really deliver on something with a lot riding on it, but they don't necessarily have the same amount of time to deliver as they probably would have, or, you know, they don't have as much time as it looks like they had. I think the next thing to consider for any new game that's going to come out is the company's current track record, right? Because maybe the game, maybe the company, maybe the game company made some great stuff in the past, but their all their new stuff just isn't that good, or it's just under delivering or undercooked, takes forever to fix, etc. And I think, and you know, I think people do a pretty good job at kind of assessing that before games come out. If a studio's kind of fallen off and they start, you know, just pumping out more garbage, then it's kind of hard to stay committed to it. But if a studio consistently puts out good stuff all the time. I think the first thing that I think of is like FromSoft. If FromSoft announces a new game, I don't think anyone's really expecting it to suck because they've, you know, for the, you know, they haven't really made a bad game before, right? They don't announce Elden Ring and everyone's speculating, oh, oh, is it going to be bad? Is, is everyone going to hate it? No, like we just expect that it's going to be good and ends up being good because they have a very good track record. Bethesda, on the other hand, is just the definition of peaked in high school. They made Morrowind, crazy good stuff. Oblivion, all the Fallout games, New Vegas, etc. Super good stuff. They made Skyrim, which obviously ended up being the cash cow. However, previous previous game making experience does matter. They're like value and stuff. But I think a small problem, and by small I mean uh, rather large, is that the current Bethesda track record is just current, like just spiraling down over and over and over. Because we get Fallout 4, which you know, objectively is a pretty good game, but it did have some, like, pretty glaring flaws, right? I mean, even Skyrim, there's a lot of fair criticisms to be making with Skyrim as well. So, already we see a little bit wishy-washy, but, you know, even though there is pretty good nitpicks to be had there, you're not really gonna let that ruin your experience of the game. It's like, they're still successful, they're still good. However, Fallout 76, Fallout 76 was probably their first big blunder, like, their, you know, the first big PR disaster, like, everyone was mad, where it really did just feel like a certified loss for the company. And I don't necessarily mean like the side Bethesda projects and stuff, but I, I mostly mean mainline like Elder Scrolls Fallout. So we get like Fallout 4, not, you know, there's a couple good nitpicks, Fallout 76, a lot of good nitpicks. And then we get to, you know, there's some side stuff like Redfall, which 
questionable, you know, game release decisions again. The biggest thing, though, that I think, you know, the elephant in the room that we have to address here is uh, Starfield, because that's the newest one that they've made so far. So, the closest look that we're going to get to an Elder Scrolls 6 so far is going to be Starfield, just because that's their most recent release, so that's tech they're working with, etc. So, if we look at Starfield as kind of the closest glimpse into Elder Scrolls 6 we have so far, I think that paints a very worrying picture. Because, as everyone's aware, I'm not going to, you know, no one has to go into the whole story. But Starfield was pretty mid, pretty disappointing, and overall lackluster reviews, and it really could have just been better. Now, I do want to stipulate that I don't think it deserves all the hate it got. I don't think it's a bad game. I don't, I don't you know, most people wouldn't really say it's, it's a bad game. You know, commonly I've seen, like, or, you know, Twitch chat and stuff when I'm talking to them. It's like 6 out of 10. There's fun to be had. It's a decent game. Pretty good experience. It has its moments. But just some really questionable decision making in the Starfield, you know, formative process just really ended up hurting that production later down the road, which is where we see, even though we have some, like, pretty cool cities, pretty cool quests, perk systems, roleplay opportunities, etc., they also, some of their decisions go against that so much that it ends up hurting the game and making it pretty hard to actually get through to play um, or to enjoy. I think the biggest thing that we've heard mentioned a lot in other videos and, and opinions online is just the idea that they were trying to mimic that like Skyrim effect of have a game that can last so long that you don't have to make another game. I think they were really kind of banking on Starfield just being a game you can play forever, but they didn't quite do a good job at it because they, when you approach the game from an angle of make it good and people can spend time in it like Skyrim, it does get pretty dang replayable, but Starfield, if you're purposely developing the game up front of just how do we trap players in here and just make them play it forever, not only is it kind of malicious, but it's going to hurt the gameplay because you're not necessarily trying to make it fun. They're just trying to make it expansive, right? A common critique is that it's a mile wide inch deep, and I can agree with that. So my biggest worry, I think, for Elder Scrolls 6 at the current moment is just going to be that same Starfield problem. Are they just going to try so hard to make a big experience that, you know, modders can put stuff in and then they can re-release a hundred times that they're not actually going to put any quality in it? Are they just going to procedurally generate a massive game world that looks pretty cool, has some cool stuff? But overall, is it just going to be walking, generic quests, boring combat? Because that's kind of what it's shaping up to be if we're looking at some of the more recent entries. We only see, you know, as we look at Elder Scrolls, it just gets dumbed down every release. And if we get any more quest markers in Skyrim, I mean, at that point, you're pretty much just playing a visual novel. So I, I do hope that Elder Scrolls 6, I hope Bethesda can realize what mistakes they're making and move on from them and just improve the games in the way they're supposed to be. It's not like they don't have the resources. They're like one of the biggest names in the gaming industry. They, they made Skyrim. Skyrim's like one of the games of like the century. Whether you think it's like super good or not. I mean, it did just make a ton of money. And it's still relevant, you know, 13 or whatever years later. So they're a big name. They have the money. They have the team. And they have the smarts. We look at stuff like Oblivion and New Vegas and Morrowind. They're all super good. And, you know, Todd Howard worked on all of these games. Like the people who worked on the old games. Are working on the new games so we still have the brains that brought us stuff like Morrowind you know for the most part some of them left but for the most part like a lot of the people who made the good Bethesda games good are still on the team so it's not like lack of star power or talent that's stopping these games from coming to fruition I think it's just you know more of a focus on money and playtime and re-releases and less of a focus on make a actually good quality product a lot of people like to say Todd Howard has gotten to be a lot better of a marketer than a game developer which I do agree is a pretty common issue these days however I do think Elder Scrolls 6 is in a very unique position because they haven't really done anything with it yet I mean they basically said that once they're done with Starfield they're entering pre-production of Elder Scrolls 6 so a couple months ago they officially announced that they're starting to work on the game because Starfield had come out which means they've really got a blank slate here I mean they probably have the game engine and stuff and like obviously core concepts of the story and like stuff like that however they haven't actually made the game. So every critique that we've given and every critique that they've heard, because they've definitely heard them, Starfield was did not win any game awards last year. So it's just, they have a blank slate and they know what they did wrong. So the question is, are they going to fix that or are they just going to commit to the doomed reality of the world that they created for themselves? Little Marlin reference there. Just because, you know, when we look at criticizing like, oh, the game's too big and it's shallow, game hold your hand too much, it feels like it's old, it doesn't feel innovative, right? Like there's a lot of stuff that we see in, in Starfield and, you know, even a couple of, you know, like Skyrim, etc. that they can look at those and fix it. Because again, it's not like, it's not like Elder Scrolls 6 is half done already. So they make Starfield and people, you know, hate this aspect and this aspect and they're like, oh, well, that's too bad because that's already bad 
baked into the very core of Elder Scrolls 6, so we're just going to have to work with it, because it's it's not even, like, they're only just starting to work on it. So every criticism they've received, they can pretty much fix. They can they can just make a good game. They're not they're not married to anything, they're not, you know, they're not committed to any specific thing, because the game's just, it's just like not, it's not even, it's like, it's it's pre-production. They can do anything still. So, you know, sure, it's like, if you know it's going to take place in Hammerfell, you know the main story, you know, like, the core concepts and stuff you want in the game, that's great, but some of these criticisms you're receiving, you can just improve on those in your game design, because they have a totally blank slate here. So what I really hope is that, you know, can Todd Howard slash Bethesda as a whole be the bigger man and just say, okay, we made Starfield and it was pretty disappointing, so let's just buckle down and make a good game. It's, it's a highly anticipated game to a incredibly popular franchise so let's just make it super good and worthy of the title so it should be good they have the time to make it they they're not locked into anything yet and they have their criticism they have their you know constructive feedback and stuff and they have the star power they have everything they really need to make Elder Scrolls 6 a fantastic game that can live on for you know decades and hundreds of re-releases probably as well only problem is if we go back to you know company track record is that what they're going to do probably not so you know like the title suggests Elder Scrolls 6 really shouldn't be a bad game it should be a good game. They have all the materials they need to make something great. And it doesn't have to be, you know, the greatest game ever made, but I think it can definitely be a solid 8 out of 10, 9 out of 10. Like, that's definitely within the realm of possibility. However, we're talking about Bethesda. When was the last time Bethesda did something like this? They make really good games, but I'd argue they haven't made, like, a solid 10 out of 10 in, you know, like, approaching 20 years. I think Oblivion is probably the last game. Oblivion Fallout 3 were really the last games that were super duper good with few criticisms. And, you know, maybe people disagree. I think Morrowind in New Vegas, everyone can agree, is basically just like pinnacle Bethesda, right? Whether you think they're fun or not, it's like, that's what we can look to is like, yes, this is a very good game. So I'm just hoping, just they don't, they just don't have the track record, right? Because, you know, they're not, they don't, they don't release Starfield. They released Starfield and they're not going to update it over the years. They're not going to address the main concerns of the players. They, they kind of like to pretend like they are. You know, they release updates for Starfield like, Oh yeah, we're hearing you. Here's a mini-map. Here's new food textures. Here's an animation to eat the food from the environment instead of putting it in your inventory. Like, little, little feedback things the players suggest. But it's stuff that should have been in the game. No-brainer. Not even ideal features that they add later, but just mini-maps and stuff or some things like that. The fact that that just wasn't even in there is, like, mind-boggling. And, of course, that you know, they're, they're addressing small concerns that the players have, so kudos to them, sort of. But... They're not really doing anything to fix the big problems of the game that, you know, everyone, you know, we've heard a million times. Wide game, etc. Shallow game. So, they they never really fixed that. And same with, you know, like Skyrim, Fallout and stuff, Fallout 76. There just, there wasn't really a lot of work put into it to fix the weaker aspects of the game. They kind of just finish their product and then commit to milking it really hard, but they don't really put any effort into fixing it. I think, you know, common, two common examples that people give, and I agree because they're two of my favorite games of all time, but we look at stories like No Man's Sky, Cyberpunk 2077, where both were highly anticipated, both had her horrendously rocky launches, but they also have now not only earned back their respect, but have also legitimately become fantastic games. Cyberpunk, not a good game to start off with. I think it definitely had the core elements in it, but you know, it just wasn't finished yet. So and then they put the time in, took them, you know, two, three, four years, made, you know, good DLC as well. And now an actual bona fide good game experience, one of the best you can get. Same with No Man's Sky. Constant free updates at no cost, just because, you know, they just said, yep, we made a bad game. We're going to own up to it and fix it. So I wish, I wish Bethesda would do stuff like that. If they can kind of look at like, oh, people didn't like Starfield that much. Let's slow it down, give it a year, give it two, update it, make it a better experience. They're not going to. Bethesda just doesn't seem to be that kind of company. They're an incredibly money-focused company. And of course, every company's money-focused. You know, I'm not trying to say you should just do stuff out of charity, but I just, I think Bethesda sort of lacks the artistic integrity or, you know, integrity to the fan base to really own up and just be like, yep, we under-delivered, let's fix it. I don't think they're going to do that. So, you know, that, you know, that leads us back to Elder Scrolls 6. How are we going to make Elder Scrolls 6 better than Starfield and stuff? How are we going to make it really worth a 15-year wait? I think... Is anything really ever going to be worth a 15-year wait? Rarely. So I think, again, justifying it with the wait time is going to be incredibly difficult. However, I do think, again, I think they can just make a good game if they just try to make a good game. Starfield really felt like it was just made for money. It didn't really feel like they cared about the setting. It didn't really feel like they cared about innovative experience. It just felt like it was motivated by money, and it was money first, 
game second. Whereas I feel like Skyrim, at least when it was first released, was kind of the opposite. They made a you know, pretty good game, had some pretty glaring flaws, but overall they were still committed to making a good game, which is why people still liked it. And then after it was successful, that's when they kind of committed to releasing it 10 times, etc. All the DLCs, stuff like that. Creation Club especially. So I think Skyrim is what kind of converted them from quality then money to come at it with the approach of making money first, game second. So Starfield really felt motivated to just sell stuff. Sell me a game, sell me Creation Club, sell me DLC, keep me in the game for 10 years. It didn't feel like they were trying to make a good game from the start. And that's why I think even if Bethesda did have the integrity to like own up and fix their games or make better games, I really don't think it's possible with some of the stuff they're making. Because Cyberpunk and No Man's Sky, even day one with the Rocky releases, they had co the core aspects of the game that everyone loves were there. No Man's Sky still had all the exploration and stuff, all the aesthetic. Cyberpunk still had like the gripping story and very like, good cutscenes and graphics and stuff. Um, but the things that were weak about them could be fixed because the, the core of the game, despite being, you know, Rocky launch, that core of the game was still golden. It was still a good game deep down. They just had to polish it up a little bit before they released it. Starfield, however, it feels a little like the opposite. It feels like there's a couple good, you know, there's a couple gold leaves on the outside of a rotten core. Because Starfield wasn't built up to be a good game from the start, you can't necessarily just improve it with free updates over time because it's kind of doomed to fail from the beginning because there just there wasn't really anything to build off of in the first place. It was just kind of built on a shallow foundation of just there's not much to do here. So it's not only hard to improve, but it's hard to even enjoy from the first place. So I think it's kind of doomed from the beginning. Whereas some games that do have, you know, rocky starts but good stuff at the core can be fixed over time because deep down they still have what makes them good all along the way. So again, Elder Scrolls 6, once we go back to Elder Scrolls 6, they just have to start at it. They have to think of it game first. They're a company. They have to make money. Everyone knows this. So they're going to they're going to sell it for money. There's going to be DLC. There's probably going to be Creation Club. And you can, you know, you can say if that's good or bad or not. But I, I don't mind that it, they're trying to make money. That's their job. However, they're not going to make a good product if they're only motivated by money. I don't want another Starfield for Elder Scrolls 6. A game that feels 10 years old, way too big for its own good, with nothing interesting to do, that just feels like you can only put two hours into it before you feel like you've done everything. There really has to be a new, fresh experience that feels like an Elder Scrolls game, but also feels like a new game. And again, they have a completely fresh slate to do this. So there's nothing stopping them. There's not really any excuse for them to not deliver here. They have the talent, they have the time, and they have a blank slate to truly innovate and make a good game. Okay, all of that aside, I think that addresses the main core of what I was trying to say. Elder Scrolls 6 shouldn't suck. They have all the materials to make it good. But given Bethesda's track record and a little bit of, you know, integrity, scumminess, etc., I don't think it will be good. I think it will be disappointing just because I just, I don't think Bethesda's the kind of company to own up to that and make it good. So, unfortunately, I am not super excited for Elder Scrolls 6 anymore just because after the Starfield fiasco, my trust is just hurt enough that I just don't think they're going to be able to pull it off. And I really honestly hope they, I hope they prove me wrong. So bad. Because I, I don't want Elder Scrolls 6 to fail. Well, it's, it's not going to fail. It's, it's of course going to make money, but I, I don't want it to be disappointing. I'm not rooting for it to be bad just because I say it's going to be. I just... When looking at it with a realistic lens, I just have a, you know, I just think it's a very low percent chance Bethesda can pull it off unless they really try to do something good here. If, if they can really own up to it and, and work on it, I think it'll be good. But realistically, probably going to be a little lackluster and I just, you know, I hope they prove me wrong. Um, I think that's, I, yeah, I think that's a good place to end this first episode here of Toasty Taco. Um, this was kind of my experiment with making a video essay style without having to do a bunch of editing. I didn't want to get bogged down in editing. So I wanted to give my less scripted, a little more ranty, a little more jumbled thoughts out there, um, but more timely. Not the whole YouTube channel, but a podcast series within the YouTube channel. It'll help me get a lot more discussion and ideas that I want to get out there without having to spend a lot more time on editing and graphics and like scripting all the stuff. So if you liked kind of the rant style, just listen to me while, you know, listen to me in the background while you're doing stuff. That's great. I would love to do more episodes of these, but I think if we do do an episode two, let's, you know, I think we'll stay on the Elder Scrolls train for a little bit longer. So episode one can be about its development cycle so far. Um, episode two, I think I'm going to try and do a, what we want to see in Elder Scrolls six, where it's going to take place, story expectations, gameplay expectations. So less about the fundamental building of the game and more of the what we want to see in the game what we can expect from the game so stay tuned for a week or two we'll get that next episode out 
And yeah, so leave a comment down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Like the video if you like it. Join the Discord if you want to talk more in person, etc. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. I'm a god. How can you kill a god?